chilling tales for dark nights. Horror Hotel presents the episode Houdini's Hand, starring Tony Folden, Montrell Miller, James Edward Thomas, and Daniel Kiernan. There always seems to be a vacancy at the Pogansville Motor Court Motel. A brownish-green 1987 Pontiac Grand Am with a decaying vinyl top creeps through the parking lot seeking a place to cool its engine. The driver, Rufus Bass, changes gears and backs the rusted car into a darkened corner. In the passenger seat, Thaddeus Tyrone slouches so low, he only catches an occasional glimpse of an oily moon winking through the treetops. The two men intend to quickly transact a nefarious business deal and then vacate the $18 room within an hour. Hey, Rufus, I thought you said our room was number 222. Trust me, Tyrone, I know what I'm doing. Oh, sure you do. Nobody needs to connect this car with the room we're in. Uh, okay. Now grab that bag from behind your seat. <sighs> A light switch in here somewhere. When are you going to get our car fixed? I may never get it fixed. And besides, it's not our car, it's my car. I may just get a whole new ride after this deal. You know, recycle the old lead sled back into the system from whence it came. You could always just let me have it. You know, like to sweeten up my end of the deal a little bit. You need to learn to live within your means, T. That rust bucket still moves around under its own power, so that makes it worth at least a hundred bucks. I ain't just gonna give it away. Oh, yeah, well, remember you promised me a hundred bucks for watching your back. I won't forget. I never forget any details. Now put that bag on the bed and turn on some lights. It seems like there's more burned out bulbs in this place than good ones. You'll forget whatever suits you. I won't forget your hundred bucks. Yeah, well, ride shotgun for you isn't the safest activity I can think of. Listen, T, I've already done all the dirty work. I located the goods and done the breaking and entering. I acquired the merchandise and made the getaway. Like, all you have to do is be here during the transaction. I don't want the buyer getting any funny ideas. Now, what do you think about this merchandise? So that's the merchandise, and old box is the merchandise. It's not the box, you welter brain. It's what's in the box. What's in the box? Houdini's hand. Say what? It's Houdini's hand. Here, take a look. Hey, back off, Rufus. Just put that thing up on the dresser. It's Houdini's old mummified hand. You mean like there's a real dead guy's hand in there? Like from that old dead magician? Yep. Somebody cut it off Houdini's body after he died. Well, so, so what? Who do you want some old dead thing like that? A lot of people. What would they do with it? It's got uses. What kind of uses? Like, what uses? It's dead. I can tell you I stole it off a of Stumpy Nixon. You mean the one on burglar down in Atlanta? You stole that dead hand from Stumpy Nixon? Sure did. Stumpy Nixon left it in his flat while he was out visiting his girlfriend. So when I went to go pay him a visit, I discovered he left his door unlocked. So I just pop in and lift the box. Stumpy Nixon even left me a bag to carry it off with. You stole that hand off of an one-armed burglar. Yeah, I guess it left him a little short-handed. <laughs> <laughs> what was Stumpy Nixon using that dead hand for? I heard he was using it to unlock doors and safes and other stuff. I mean, I, I'm telling you, this thing is valuable to the right people. So how does he do it? You know, like, how does Stumpy Nixon use an old dead hand to open 
doors and safes. Man, I don't know. I just know he does. Stumpy Nixon inherited it from some other old guy that was using it for the same thing. Somehow they use it. Have you seen it? You mean the hand? Yeah, the hand. Have you seen the hand? No, I haven't seen it. It's, it's in this box, this Chinese trickster box. You know, you got to slide a panel this way and that way. It's, it's, it's like a puzzle. Uh, it's an ancient combination lock. I used to try to figure these things out. <laughs> I'm going to call my fence, Al Sharko. Man, this thing's got to be worth at least 10K. Easy. Sharko's Body Shop. Hey, Al. It's Rufus. How's it going? What do you want, Rufus? I'm here with my mother. Hey, say hi to your mom for me. My mother despises vermin like you. What do you want? Your mom is hard. Listen, I've got something you want. I doubt it. Really, Al, I've managed to pick up something quite valuable. Are you going to tell me what it is before I die of old age? Get this. I've got, in my possession, Houdini's hand. That old thing Stumpy Nixon's been using to unlock safes and stuff? <laughs> yep. Walked right into Nixon's place and picked it up. Get this. Stumpy left his door unlocked. Stumpy Nixon always leaves his door unlocked. It'd be a waste of time for him to lock his door with that hand thing around. That's what I'm saying, Al. This thing unlocks stuff. I figured you might know someone who wants it. Stumpy Nixon might want it. And if you're lucky, he'll take it back without a lot of trouble. And I'm not worried about that one-armed safe cracker. Well, you should be worrying plenty. Nobody messes around with Stumpy Nixon. Even the cops leave that guy alone. A couple of years ago, some detective got on Stumpy Nixon's trail. One morning, the detective wakes up with his nose lopped off. Only an imbecile like you would steal Stumpy Nixon's hand. Hey, Tyrone. How did you get Houdini's box open? That bathroom doesn't have any toilet paper. Left me stranded. I and dry. The box, T. How'd you unlock it? Didn't touch it. I was in the bathroom while you were talking to Al. So how did it get open? I guess the hand did it. It opened stuff, doesn't it? Couldn't it open its own box? Guess so. What's that stuff in the box? Doesn't look like a hand to me. But it, it looks like, looks like rock salt. Yeah, 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 it's exactly what it is. It's rock salt. They, they must have packed the hand in rock salt to preserve it. Yep. Tastes like rock salt. Man, get that trash can, T. We'll dump the salt out in the box. We'll get a look at that hand. No hand! There isn't anything in this box but rock salt. That's probably Al. Hello, Al. Did you change your mind? You've got my hand. Did, did, did Al Sharko call you? No. Al Sharko didn't call me. You were trying to sell it to Al, weren't you, Rufus? Well... You thought you could just steal my hand and sell it, didn't you? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Stumpy... That will be Mr. Nixon to you. You've never been perfectly honest with anyone in your whole miserable life. Why start with me? You've got my hand, and I want it back with interest. Okay, Mr. Nixon. I'll admit, I've got it. What's it worth to you? What's it worth to me? <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, <laughs> I'll tell you what it's worth to you. The way I see it, you took my hand. I want my hand back, and now I want your hand, too. What? My hand? You're crazy! You'd better seriously consider my offer. Remember, I want my hand back, and I want your hand in interest. And listen, Rufus, I'm on my way over there to get it. Who's that? Is that Stumpy Nixon? What's he want? My hand. He says he wants my hand in interest because I stole his old dead Houdini's hand. How does he expect you to do that? Saw off your own hand? I guess. What's that? 
It's just a TV. How'd it come on by itself like that? Quick, turn it off, man. It's just a TV. Maybe it's got, like, a remote control. You think the hand did that? I don't know. It's out of that box, you know. That old dead hand, it's in this room somewhere. I, I, I don't know, T. I, I don't think you can do stuff like that. No, it's in here. That hand turned on that TV. It's in here with us right now. Come over here and help me move this dresser. If it's under there, we'll see it. Oh, man. Well, but don't pick up your end or anything. It's nothing but... It's, not, it's nothing back there but old dust money the size of cats. Well, let, let's put this rock salt back in the box. You answer that. I, I'll pick up this mess. That is Tyrone. So you're watching Rufus is back for a hundred bucks? Yeah. How did you know? I know a lot, Tyrone. I know that after Rufus gets through settling up with me, he's not going to have your hundred bucks. Rufus is the one who's going to be short-handed. Hey, Rufus, the damn boat just locked itself. The hand just locked us in. Ugh. Ugh. Come on, you stupid dog. Uh, man, get out of the way. Let me try. Good. Won't open. Oh, man. How to do that? Quick, it's got to be behind these curtains. Come on, come on, help me look. Hey, the window's all boarded up. Uh, th th they must have done that after the, the big hailstorm at Pokersville broke out every window in town. That was three years ago! Yeah, well, well, my guess is that most of the windows in this fleet bag motel the same way. How are we going to get out of here now? We got burglary tools in the bag, you chowder head. In case you forget, remember, we're breaking the places for a living. Oh, yeah! We can get out of here now. Speaking of which, let's get to work on that right now. Let's see what's in the bag. Okay, okay, okay. You've got a claw hammer, a saw, a wire cutter, some duct tape, bailing wire, and some nails. Hey, Rubens, where's your crowbar? I lost it. It, 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 it fell off the Piggly Wiggly roof back in the green room. And you never got another one? Never needed another one. Till now! Yeah, till now. Why is that phone off the hook? When are your heists going to stop messing around? You need to get your hands sawed off and ready for me because I'm on my way over there right now. Hey, Rufus, why are you picking up that saw? Huh? I hope you're not thinking what I think you're thinking. No, I'm not thinking what you think I'm thinking. I know one thing. We, we got to figure out a way to get out of this room before Stumpy Nixon gets here. The hand is hanging around this table. Tyrone, Tyrone, is that you, boy? Uh, yes, it's me. I've got some good news for you, Tyrone. And I've got some bad news. Oh, goody. The good news is, I don't have my heart set on taking Rufus's hand. That is good news. Yep. The bad news is that your hand will also be satisfactory. Whoa, 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 whoa. why my hand? Well, any hand will do. So long as you crooks come off with a hand. You're just fortunate I don't want an arm and a leg. <laughs> we really got to get out of here. The claw hammer. Maybe I can pry the plywood off with the claw hammer. Oh, man, look like they really screwed these boys on. This boy won't pry off. Broke off this cheap hammer. Rufus! Rufus! The hand is behind you in the lampshade. Rufus, watch out! The lamp. I mean, ah, it's about to tip on you. Rufus! <laughs> Let me kick the plug out of the wall and get that lamp off of you. Rufus! Rufus! Come on, look at me, man. You nearly died. You peed your pants and you nearly died. The smoke coming out of your sleeves. Big old sparks were jumping out of your hair. I saw the hand right around the lamp right before it fell on you. The, the hand. The, the 
had his kill us. It went back in its box. Just get out. Quick, grab those nails and nail it sucker shut. That stomach accent. I'm not gonna answer it. I have a multi tool with a screwdriver. Specifically, a fellow's head. Man, if I had a tool like that, I'd already be halfway in Chattanooga. <laughs> there, there, it's trapped now. Oh, oh. oh man. <laughs> the nails are backing themselves out of the box. The head is going to get out. Get it. Houdini's head. I can see it. <laughs> Stumpy Nixon gets here. Yes, we do. And it's gonna be your hand. Tyrone, I see you've had a little run-in with my hand. Uh-huh. You got old Rufus's hand in that bloody pillowcase. Uh-huh. So, Tyrone, tell me, have you learned anything? Anything from all this? You don't mess around with Stumpy Nixon. Well, yeah. But let me give you a little bit of advice. You are known by the company you keep. Hang around with knuckleheads like Rufus, and you'll end up like Rufus there on the floor. I'll just take my magical hand now, thank you. Wait, 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 wait. What do you want me to do with Rufus' hand? Ah, yes. The interest on my property. I don't think I'll be taking it today. It's not really my size, and the color's not right either. Houdini's Hand was written by Al Hess. Dialogue and Foley recording and editing by Henry Howard. Horror Hotel theme song composed by Royal Teague. Houdini's Hand was scored by Kenneth Singleton and Quentin Amy. Additional sounds by Jamie Well Dye. Visit the Horror Hotel website at horrorhotelwebseries.com. Copyright 2013, Al Hess. This is Ricky Hess. Stay safe, stay scared.